Welcome to Complete Putting, our four-week coaching plan that will transform your game with the flat stick. This is week one, let's take charge of your game. Let's talk putter length and how it can affect your setup and your putting stroke. So if you're not aware, you can actually get putters in different lengths. So we've got a few here to give you an idea on what they look like. So I've got a 33 inch putter here in my left hand. I've got a 35 inch putter in my right hand and now he's got a 34 inch there. Plonk that in the middle end. You can see the differences in the length of those putters. Now this can have a massive effect on how you stand to the golf ball and how you actually putt. You can go longer than 35, it's rare that we see that Andy, but so John Rahm for instance has got a 37 inch putter, but you know what, we don't often see that, so I'll give you that one back there Andy. So it's important to understand that if your putter length is wrong for you, it could be inhibiting your ability to put a good setup on it and then a good stroke on it, because it is very much about the posture with putting, because it is very different as we know to an iron shot isn't it? Yeah we want to stand quite differently think about what we want from let's say an iron or even a driver we stand at the side of the golf ball we have this nice sort of neutral spine and we swing around the body well with the putting stroke it's a lot different we're really looking to create a fairly consistent it's, it's a straighter back and through stroke it's not fully straight but there's certainly a straighter move than we would see with an iron so how we stand to the golf ball with our posture will help influence that motion. If we stand a little too upright or a little too bent forward, again, that's going to have an influence or an impact on how we move the putter. And then we start having to compensate Pierce for a, mm -hmm. a poor posture. So if we can get the right length for us, that's going to enable us, we're all different sizes. Yes. If we can get into a good posture for ourselves and get the right length to suit us, it just means then we can produce a nice consistent motion really with a lot more ease. Okay, so we need to figure out how to get into this posture, don't we? So obviously people at home will have different length putters, but let's give them the posture that we like and then we can see whether the putter's gonna be any good for them. Okay, and this is a great guide this is. So you can do this, just stand up wherever you are now and go through this. So get yourself with a normal stance, feet sort of shoulder width apart. And what we like to see is, as we said earlier, more bend forward from the hips the eye line is a little more over the, uh, the target line. And from here now, I'm just gonna rest the putter just against my leg here. I'm just gonna get my arms to relax, hang down in front of me, just underneath the shoulders. Now from here, all I wanna do is just bring the, the upper arms close to the chest. This is about where I'd like to be. So if I just gra grab the putter now here and just place my hands on what feel comfortable, this is perfect for me. Because look at that, I'm right at the top of the putter length. I feel comfortable from here. If you get, if you do this exercise and you start gripping down here, <laughs> well, you know the putt is a little too long for you. All this here is wasted weight and and and, uh, and length of shaft here. So, and again, if you're if you're feeling that it's a little bit too short, you might be sort of right off the end there. Again, it's just finding out. So, great exercise that you can do. Eye over the eyes over the target line. Let the hands and arms hang underneath underneath the shoulders, upper arms in, and then from here just take hold of the putt. From here now, I'm in a good posture for me and then we fit the length to suit the individual. We're all different. So we know straight away for you the 34 inch is perfect. 34 Because that's gone, obviously just, just gone straight into your hands there. All right then, so let's see what you've got then. So what's this putt? It's around about 12 feet, I think. Yeah, a little bit left to right. A little bit of left to right. I'm just gonna get, again, really feel for me now, Pierce. I really feel the arms are just hanging down, eyes very much over that ball to target line. And from here, I can go ahead and just swing more freely on this. Yeah, you look rock solid over the golf ball. You probably just need to work at your pace control. I think I do, yeah. But luckily for you, we're going to be doing that through exactly. this coaching plan. All right, so we've done the posture. You understand the length of the putter. Now it's time to get into the rest of the setup. So when it comes to the grip, we have a slight variation. Now with a normal, let's say, seven iron, we have the club position more across the base of the fingers. Well, with putting, we want it slightly different. We like to have the the putter a little bit more upright, running more down the palm of the hand. This really helps the club stay a little bit more locked and helps keep the club face square. From here, we can go ahead and put the right hand on where we feel comfortable. Now, when we build the stance, we want the feet roughly about shoulder width apart, nice and stable with the lower body. The legs are still really important in putting. We'll also have the ball slightly ahead of the center of the, uh, the stance and the shaft pretty much at 90 degrees. We don't want too much shaft lean and we don't want the shaft leaning back like this. A great guide for the shoulders as well is that we want them fairly level. We don't want really any excessive tilts of the shoulders either way. So do your best to get the shoulders as level as possible. And we want roughly 50% weight distribution on each leg. 
Now in regards to posture, we like to see that the, the top of the neck is a flat spot. So you'll see here that the top of the neck there is pretty flat and the hands are very much hanging down underneath that spot. This allows you to get the eyes pretty much over that target line. We like to see the eyes literally over the target line so we can look straight down that line. When it comes to alignment, obviously we want the putter aiming straight down that target line and we want the feet, the knees, the hips, the forearms and the shoulders all running parallel to that target line. Green reading is massively important and we feel it's very much overlooked by golfers. So that's why we're going to be working at it every week through this four week plan. Now, Andy, today we're going to be talking about why we see people get green reading wrong. And we're also going to be talking about a system that we can actually help them with for simple green reading. And what better place to do it on the 18th green here at Villa Padiena, Los Flamingos Golf Course. The greens here are super fast and super slopey, which is great for you because we get to see how good you are at I green like reading. I challenge. I'm pretty good at green reading as well. Okay, so yeah, let's just go through a couple of the reasons that we see why people struggle reading greens. Well, the first thing is people, the main thing is people underestimate how much break there is. So they're, they're faced with a putt and they don't generally allow for enough break. And some of the, our students, Pierce, when we get them on the golf course, sometimes we will just ask them to double the amount of break that they think is going to happen and they put better doing this. So bear that in mind, if you're, if you're looking at a putt, are you continuously underestimating the amount of break that might be a good option for you? The second thing is, is really the system of how they choose their start line. Now, obviously when we are looking at a breaking putt, the number one thing, first of all, we've, we've assessed the pace but the, the next thing we need to think about is where are we? Where do we want to start the golf ball off? Because if we can get the initial start point good, match with the pace, we're going to produce a good putt. But most people struggle to pick that start line, and this is one of our theories why. So think about this putt here. We've got almost a almost a 30 foot up here. Mm -hmm. I've already got my initial start point down there because we've already worked this out. Some people have a really good idea of, of seeing the break, so they'll, they'll look at the putt and they'll see the curve or the trace that they can imagine the ball going in the hole. But what they tend to do is, if you imagine a straight line from the ball to the hole here, and you imagine the journey of the ball, what they do is they can see the apex, which is the furthest point away from the line, and they aim at the apex. So they're pointing the golf ball or aiming themselves straight at that apex. Yes. The problem is with that, they've missed out this part of the putt, which is the most important because we've got to focus on the start line, the initial start line. If you're aiming at the apex, you've missed all this out. What we need to do is choose a line and choose the, the, the path of the putt that's going to get it to that apex, which is generally wider than the apex. So you can see here where I've put the tee, that's a lot further away than the apex yes. because that's my start line. But if I get it online, that will travel through the apex and in the hole pierce. I'm predicting Correct. a good one here. I like it, I like it. So what we're saying is it's the most important part, short of the putt here to aim. Obviously the ball will break more when it gets more towards the hole, but this is the really important part where you need to be focusing on this aim. And you think about this, we ask this a lot of people, how much break is there? And people tend to judge break based on the apex. Now we're looking at the, the point next to the hole. That's how much break there is, not where the apex is. When we put golfers here, and actually show them this, they go, I can't aim that, far, can't right. that far right. What do you want about? Yeah, most people will be doing this as well. So let me play the putt here. I've chose it already. I'm just going to go through my sort of system of how I do, and then uh, let's see how that ends up here. So I'm going to walk in. Again, notice I tend to focus very much on the initial part here. I'm looking down of where I want this ball to start, and then it's pretty much just about getting the pace right now, but the attention's on the start line. Okay, a little bit uphill as well, just to give it a little bit extra. going to come in. So that one's, so if we assess that there now, slightly firm on the putt, cool. if I'd hit it a little bit softer, the break would have kicked in. So the read wasn't too bad, just a little firm on that. But great that I missed it on the high side because most people, as we said earlier, they're underestimating it. And if you're missing on the low side, it's never got a chance of going in. You're absolutely correct. I'm pretty sure that's not good enough. Have another go. We need to see if that line was good because you're absolutely right. You overhit that one. There's no way you'd want to be that far past. Let's see what happens now when you get the pace correct based on that start line You're assuming again. I'm going to get it correct now, Piers. Well, I'm hoping you are. It would, we've only got two golf two goals, balls, so you need to get it right now, otherwise we're in trouble. Oh, 
that looks better straight away a for pace. A little short maybe on that one there now. No, it's not too bad, they're fast here. A little here. short, but again, a little firmer on that one. So somewhere in between those two puts is the perfect one. Do we get another go or not? No, no, no more That's goes, no more goes. On that one. People will be turning off. But you can see that exactly right. If you'd have got the pace better on that one, that would have been really good for the line, for sure. Did you know the average PGA Tour Pro only holds 65% of his putts from six feet? From 10 feet, he only holds 39%, and from 20 feet, he only holds 15%. Now, based on that, what do you think your expectations are? That's the data we've got from the 15th club, but it surprises us really how many golfers from six feet expect or think that they should hold every one. And then when they miss, they get frustrated. So think about this, set yourself some real expectations based on your level. If they're 65% on six feet, what do you think you should be? This is gonna help you then deal with those missed shots and not take any frustration on to the next shot, which we know can affect the scores. So six foot here, based on the PGA Tour average, 65%. I'm gonna give myself 50%. That means one in two, I'd be pretty happy with. So let's see. Reasonable put and I hold it. I'd be happy with that, but I'm moving on to the next tee with a smile. It's time for your week one practice. Now we're gonna split it into two sections. The first section is going to be 10 minutes and it's going to be on something we're gonna call the calibration station because what we wanna do is we wanna be able to calibrate, so we want you to be able to calibrate your putting stroke on a straight putt. So this will be the first part of your practice. So Andy, what sort of things are we looking for in the calibration station? And obviously you've got something there to help us as well. Yeah, well the first thing is we've got two paces, roughly six feet. We're not gonna have it too long. We want a pretty straight putt so we can calibrate really our setup and our stroke and this is really going to help us generate some consistency to help the ball start on our target line Love and that. we've got the use of a, a putting mirror here the put out mirror because this really helps us see um, first of all get the aligns the alignment right mm -hmm. but also see if we can get the the shoulders and the body aligned but also the eye line we mentioned that getting the eyes pretty much over the target line as well okay so you're also wearing a uh, a funny looking hat there what's going on okay here? well i've got my optics cam here so i'm going to switch this on and hopefully show you guys how this looks so if i get in my posture now take my setup you should see you can first of all see the put out mirror and you can see it's got plenty of lines on it so from here i can align my putter straight down the target but also you'll see my eyes now are over pretty much over that target line. You can clearly see if you go too much ahead or if you're sort of way inside that there. So it's a great way of just practicing getting yourself in a good posture with those eyes perfectly over that target. You can see the alignment line. of the shoulders as well when we're over there. And I think the, the, the key is with this, you will notice if you are massively out, this is going to tell you straight away. So it is going to put you into a place where you go, oh, hang on a bit, I can't even see the mirror. What's going on there? Or um, the mirror's over there somewhere behind me. So it really does help with that. But what about if we haven't got a putting mirror? Is there an alternative? Yeah, well, you can either use some alignment sticks, so get some alignment sticks lined down, place the putter in between, or some golf clubs um, either side as well. It's just a, a something simple that you can really use to make sure that your body alignments and your eye line is over the golf ball. Now, one thing that you can do if you haven't got a mirror pierce is just drop, drop a golf ball right between the, the eyes and see where it lands. Yeah. Does it land in front of the target line or inside? And it's just a guide really to see. And if we can get it pretty close to that target line, then we're happy. Okay, well, let's see you hit some shots. We're not gonna watch you hit putts for 10 minutes, but let, I'd like to see you hit three though and see what you've got. Okay, so again, I just really feel quite neutral now. Get me to understand what a straight putt looks like and straight alignment. Now, when you're doing this for the first time, you may well feel, oh, maybe the pace on that one, Andy, or maybe hit the flag. You'll feel and see when things are going wrong for you. So you'll understand if your posture is wanting to go out, you'll understand if you want to aim left, if you want to aim right. So it's gonna give you some really good information moving forward. And it's just a really good thing that you can do. Okay, one more, you got one out of two. What have you got? A bit soft on that one. Oh, so that was a oh. soft pace. I'd like to hit it a little bit firmer than that. That's why it probably just moved offline. Maybe a touch of break from right to left on this one, but do your best to get a straight putt and just calibrate. Get your setup looking really strong and neutral. Get the club face in a good spot and get that eye line over the golf ball. Okay, very good. Now we need to work on your green reading. Your second section of practice is green reading. Now you know how important this is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get Andy to go through his process. We need you to practice this though for 20 minutes when you have your practice putting session. So Andy, 
15 to 20 foot putt is what we're looking for. Yeah. Nothing with too much of a break, but there is a break on this one. Yeah. Let's go through that process and uh, of how you practice your green reading. Okay, so this is going to be the first putt. We want you to have 20 minutes doing and varying the putts. So this is what we want you to do. So first of all, I'm going to come back. I'm going to take a good look around and sort of use my feet as we've already talked about. Let me, get, let me get cap come on. And what we're going to really do now is start to, to really get into the mindset of looking at the start line. So for me, I imagine the curve. I'm sort of having a look here. And what we want you to do is have a walk up and place a tee peg where you think you need to aim. We're going to go next to the hole. So I've got mine. I think it needs to be about here. So my that's start not your arc, that's your start point. That's my start point, so that's yeah. where you want to aim it, yes. So I'm going to come back here, I'm going to start, and see if I can line up to that point. It's definitely breaking from left to right. So then what we're going to do is, I want to make sure I've got feedback on this, so I'm going to get my ball marker and place this within the first 10 inches on that line. So this is a straight line. Okay, now this is going to tell me if I'm starting it over the line that I've chosen. So feedback perfectly you get from that uh, marker there. If you exactly. get it over there, you've started it on your line. There you go. If you miss Make it, sure you I'll tap it down as well. So I'm going to play this putt. We're going to see what happens. I'm going to see if I chose the right break. If I haven't, I'm going to do it again. And then once I'm happy, I move on to the next one. Okay, and this is where you start tying in things like pace control as well as you go through this. So normal routine now. All I'm really going to do now is think about the pace, but I've got the feedback whether I start it on my line and then we'll see where it ends up. So you started it online. Okay. S so feedback for Slightly you. Slightly firm on that one. Yeah. But I would say if it was a little softer, it might have still missed a little bit too high. So I'm going to do that one more time yeah. now. It's definitely a faster putt as well down here. So it, that would have uh, made it go further past than you think. So I'm bringing that in a little more. I think my start line is about there. So Are you saying you overread it? Uh, over it, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It must be the earlier part of the video. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so get that in place. Put this on the line. So if you're looking at this now, you're probably thinking, well, hang on a bit. This is a little bit tedious. It takes a little bit of time. But guess what? There's no point in guessing what the lines are. By going through this process in your 20 minutes, you may only go to three or four different putts, but you really are understanding what it takes to read them effectively and getting great feedback, which will definitely accelerate your progress. You're learning here. There's no, if you're just on the, on the green doing sort of putts, you're not really learning that much. Correct. Okay, I think I've got a good read on that one now. So go through the process. All about the line. pace now. See if I'm a little closer on this one. Yeah, much better. Again, there's the feedback now. I know then that I can start to understand and get a, get a good visual of what's going on, get a good feel and learn from that. I'll move on to the next one and again, keep going through the process so you are learning, you've got feedback and your green reading skills will get better. If only you had two goes on the golf course, Andy. Exactly. All right, so that concludes this week, your practice for this week. First of all, you must make sure you keep your stats. So how many putts are you taking per hole? Add them up, let's build that average so we can hopefully see that average reduce as you go through the four weeks. Then you need to make sure you do 10 minutes on your calibration station and then 20 minutes on your green reading. Exactly, and don't forget, if you want to take part in the rest of the plan, make sure you click the link down in the description Head over to meandmygolf.com and we look forward to coaching you through the rest of Complete Putting. Thanks again.